What we've seen so far is only but a glance at what makes Desert Igni unique and special. An ordinary place with ordinary people. On closer scrutiny though, very much an extraordinary place with extraordinary people. It was a recognition of this that led Bing McDade and his return to the parish after working in America for some years to for the first time ever organize a celebration of this unique place. Together with his wife Siobhan and friends, shown here, a small committee was set up to organise a Desert Igni school reunion. The date was set for the 5th of August 2007 and people returned home from across the globe to join in what turned out to be an unforgettable two-day event. As I'm sitting by the firelight and turning back the ears, I can hear my mother singing in the morning as she scrubbed our shining faces and then packed us all.
colored at the daisy field on Sunday afternoon. Then we dance to Johnny Quigley and the Royal. Through the years we all were scattered, but those friends were good and true. Always there when they were needed. Always. be home to me, yeah. That's no matter where you go, that's home. You know, so yeah. It's different now that I'd asked my mum last year. You know, so uh, that's how it is. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to be back. Mm. Are you gonna come back and settle here for I would think yeah. yeah. When I get the pension. <laughs> what age did you go away at? Seventeen. Yeah. Culture shock. <laughs> yeah, certainly was. <laughs> certainly was. Yeah. Frank, you left. What year did you say you left? I left in '65. And what age were you then? I don't want to know your age. I was 19. Mm-hmm. And you went to? I went to England. Spent a couple of years there. And then I went to Australia and spent three years there. And then I went to Chicago and I'm there ever since. And what kind of business are you in? Uh, building, contracting, homes. Cutting back a bit right now. When you say cutting back, uh, you mean beginning to take it more easy? Beginning to holiday more and travel a little bit. You know, we've uh, done our part now for the younger generation. So you had America in a good time, did you, would you say? I suppose it was good times, I. I suppose it was. Uh, times is, I mean, times is good there even. It's been good since, you know. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, when you look back at Ireland now and the Ireland you left, it's certainly a change. Big difference, big difference. Big difference. Um, I think in our day we didn't have too much. I think today some of them have too much. It could be a big part of the problem. <laughs> No, all in all, it's great to see it. Proud to be from the parish? Oh, God, yes. You never want to forget where you came from. And we're very proud of that, and that's why we were here tonight. Very thankful for the people who put this together, a lot of work, and be, be happy to be here. We we'll meet a lot of old friends. Great. Well, enjoy your time. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Good. And we'll, we'll not come back and talk to you later on. <laughs> so, we we might be as sensible. We'll be singing the next time. <laughs> the attraction of America at the time when we left, I left 53 years ago, was economics. We had no money. Uh, we had plenty of food, but we didn't have any money. And at that time, the best thing to do was to emigrate. And I went to London. At what age? That time I was 18, 17 and seven months when I went to London. And uh, uh, the reason I left London in 59 was I was going to be drafted in the British Army. And there was no way I was going to fight for Her Majesty the Queen. So I went to the United States and never regretted a minute. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, I went through London and Canada for six years. Went to San Francisco in 58, found the nice weather, settled down. And you know, after that, that's quite a few years ago, almost 50 years ago. You yeah. were in Carver? Yeah. In what kind of conditions? Oh, the conditions were good. We had a lot of fun, yeah. And we had a lot of contact with Derry. Spent a lot of time growing up around Artillery Street. Our aunt was up for Artillery Street, so there was always a group coming and going. We always used the barn for the uh, summer bedrooms. All the guys had to go to the barn, the girls got the house. So. 
That was a lot of fun. Enjoy your time. Yeah, thank you. We'll Wonderful. see you as a night or something. Thank you. Good. Okay, Thanks great. So Thanks very much. Indeed. And you're Kath or Kathy or Kathleen or? Uh, yes, yeah. I was. I was known as Kathleen growing up. Yeah. Born and reared where? Because we don't do the Born and reared in and uh, I. I'm just, oh, I want to say that I am really pleased to see how the parish and Desertegni has grown. And, you know, it used to be very poor and was poor when we were growing up. But it's, I'm really proud to see how everything has grown here and the beautiful homes. And it's great to see the families coming back. And I wouldn't miss this for the world. And your dad was, and your mum was? My dad was Con O'Donnell. My mum was Susan Greeny. O'Donnell, and my name now is Evlog. Evlog. Evlog, yes. So. And this is your sister, you this my sister. This is my sister, Bridget Mary. Well, after school here in Desert Take uh, I spent a couple of years milking cows, turning turf, working out the harvest field, and I thought, enough, enough, and I went to um, England. What age were you then? Um, I was just turned 21. Right. I think 17 was very young. Yeah. To yes. Go to Scotland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been difficult for the family. It was. Yeah. It was. Are you kidding? She was glad to kick me out. She had the whole <laughs> she had the whole bed to herself then because we used to we used to sleep share a bed. Right. You know how things were then. Yeah. So she had the whole bed to herself. She was glad. Yeah. <laughs> However, I think we did get a great education, and when I look at other places throughout the world, I think we, you know, as bad as it was, we got a great education out of it. I think so. education in Ireland has always been better. I mean, we, we had the very basic education, sort of the three R's, but I think it stood us in very good stead over the years. I was telling my sister the other day, I, um, one day I didn't go into school at all. They used to call it scheming in those days. Uh, myself and Eileen Hagen, who was who would be Willie John's niece, and you know we were very naive because we went uh, we went right past our house and over their fields, and Mickey Bradley, God rest his soul, saw us, told my father. My father got me up on the bar of the bicycle and landed me right back to the school again. <laughs> yeah. But you know the good things I remember about growing up, like. I say we didn't have much, but we'd come home from school, and if it was wet or raining, my mother would always have some warm milk on the stove for us to give us something warm to drink. She would always warm our nighties on, by the fire before it put them on at night. It's the little things that counted. That that's how you knew you were loved because there wasn't great shown affection in those days. You know, I think today, you know, kids are hugged and cuddled and played with. Nobody had the time, you know. My dad was working in the fields. He didn't have time to do all of this. But you knew you were loved by these little things. And that was very important. And I, I remember all those things, you know. So there were two sisters, any other family? No, no, that was it. Just the two of you. Just, Just the, the two. two of us. After I came, they said, that's it. <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> if we can deal with this when we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's terrific. Well, it's great to see you. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you very much. And enjoy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's going to be a great Thank night. You. Well, my first memories, I suppose, about school. Anyhow, we had to walk down to school every morning and through the fields. And uh, my bigger brother, George, he'd be running on ahead and I'd be trying to keep up with him. He had long legs and I had to work a bit harder to keep up with him, you know. And uh, I get down to school and maybe feet wet and mm -hmm. it wasn't too warm in those days in the winter's day I'll tell you when you got into the school and, and who was your teacher then? Well at that time when I went to school first it was Master Mulholland. A very nice uh, I'd always have good memories of Master Mulholland. he was a brain he, he, he could really talk to young people and children and bring them out to themselves yeah. you know, and, uh, but uh, 
Then later on, then it was Holland. Um, I want to say it's a culture shock. It's a culture shock. Yeah, it's quite a change. Yeah. 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 And then later on, then we moved. Uh, Master Stafford then after that then of course we moved up to the new school at that stage. Uh, I started the year after the open the new school. And, I remember uh, you were at school. That's right, you and I were in school together. Yeah. Mm. So we did. yeah. And uh, just for the record you're a few years ahead of me. Yeah, one that's or two important important for me, yes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and uh, went on to technical school then after that as well. And I actually remember you doing long division. Yeah. On the right. boards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, could, I could never master. Yeah. I'm sure that wasn't pretty, just the same. <laughs> but uh, it looked right to me. But, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, like Frank, I went on to the tech then after that, and then I went on into uh, I went to agriculture college and then ca- uh, cabin for a year, and then worked for the Department of Agriculture for five years, and uh, then went into truck sales and trailer sales. I did that for 20 years here in, in, in Ireland before I went to the states. We went to the States then in September of 1992. So that's, the time is moving quickly. Yeah. And, and Kevin, you. I started off in the old school, done one year and had. I was there for the changeover from the old school up to the new school. The old school would be where? Um, Down. Uh, Sheriff Bottomage, where Hegarty's. Hegarty's and, Hegarty's. Uh, and then moved up to the new school, spent the, the main five, six years there. And spent two years in technical school as well. Ran after that. Mm. Frank was older brother. He took me to school. Whenever he was looking, I was on my way back home again. <laughs> but uh, oh, I enjoyed. Enjoyed a few years at uh, school. Uh, so life. So the, Danny, one very nice memory I would have of the old school was that uh, Dennis McGrory and Bridget. They used to make cocoa for all the. All the young children that, that in the school that time, you know, they uh, they took their wee tin mug or whatever with them, and she'd make the cocoa, and they'd all line up around her kitchen uh, on these high chairs and the feet dangling, you know. <laughs> so the, we we couldn't have uh, in those days you couldn't have dealt mugs or anything like that, so it had to be all we had, I mean, you were ten mugs and. The only thing about it is that they got that hot you couldn't drink the cocoa until it got cold. <laughs> Every, I'm, everybody has to be proud of the parish, and uh, I think everybody that's gone through the parish has done pretty well. So most people, and uh, it's a nice place to, leave, to come back and visit. You couldn't get a nicer place no matter where you go. You never oh, forget that. That's for sure. I'd agree. No nicer place in Ireland. Mm. Uh, People often say it's not marketed enough for tourism and all that. I think maybe we should just keep it the way it is. It's, it's, uh, we enjoy it better that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. I enjoyed it. Okay. 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 I might need to dump that a bit. <laughs> Barn the door to the road. Glebe. Were you born and reared there, Barney? Were you? No, I was born over in off the land, over, over across the water. Over that Mullen. So you're not originally a parish man? Yeah. Well, no, I'm just over there. And how did you manage then to get to Desertigny? My father was from Desertigny, John, John Dorder, old Sharagor. And how did he meet your mum? Hi, she was hired over Manaluban, Manaluban, a farmer. Right. Well, enjoy the night. No, well, Have right. a good one, and we'll be talking to you later on. All right, you've done yeah, it. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Thanks for having Good on you. What are your memories, John, of school here? No, nothing good, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> too many slaps, too many days. And... Did you travel? You did quite a bit of travelling. You spent quite a number of years away from Ireland. Oh, yeah, I'm away since 1957. What age did you leave? What age did you leave? I left, 17 when I left. Young. 57, yeah. You went to first. Well, I went to London first. Travelled all over England, working in the tunnels, and then uh, went to California in 1976. And I came back now. I'm retired now. That's a old age pensioner. Proud to be a parish man. Sure, I am. Of course, I am. 
I'll, I'll leave it now. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thanks, Amelia. Well done. So both of you went away at some one stage or other in your lives to go work in England. Yes, yes, both. Of them. Billy was away when he was about sixteen. Yeah, just over sixteen. Yeah, I had to leave. I was working for a farmer, local farmer, uh, Jimmy Big James, uh, for ten bob a week. So my dad wrote home and said, "There's a job here in a pub for seven pound a week. Live it in and get in your grub." And and I headed over and I come back a year later, at all uh, dressed up in nice suits and my hair all done and hired a car out of Jimmy Dunne in Bunkrana for twelve pound a week. And uh, the boys thought I was a millionaire, so they came back after me. <laughs> and we had a great time over there in London. Oh, and you started a band over there, did you? I started a band over there, yeah, in the, in the early seventies. And uh, I called it Billy in the North Winds because it was from the north. It was very windy as well, up around Mile and Head. So uh, we had a fantastic time. We were always in pubs singing and uh, meeting up at the weekends, you know. And it was like back home, you know, was going visiting people that were older than us and, you know, having tea and sandwiches in their houses. So it was it was like back home for a long time, you know. So proud to be Parish men? Very, very much proud, so. Very proud. And all the, all the fellas from home that was in London along with us, if they were on a good job and you were on a kind of a middling one, they would get you fixed up along with them. That's the way we worked together and it was absolutely brilliant. I remember a lady interviewed me one time on Channel 4 television and she said, what do you miss about Ireland? I said, I miss the countryside, the, the easy going life, the nice people, you know. And, uh, and that's what it's all about, just being, you know, being with the, the good people, friendly people. You, you sing a lot of songs, you call it compose? You've written a few songs? I have written a few songs, I, so, such as they are, but there's a couple of them, I think, in this book. A lot of stuff in there. Thanks very much, both of you. Well, thanks, Danny. And have a good night. Yeah, we we'll enjoy have a good night. Yeah, we'll hear a song. And a second night coming oh, yeah. up. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, God bless. Thanks very much.